You never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. You're right beside me, and that is all that matters. You never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. You're right beside me. That is all that matters. You are covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Jehovah, the covenant keeping God. You'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. And you're right beside me. And that is all that matters. You'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. And you're right beside me. And that is all that matters. Yeshua. Covenant keeping God Jesus the covenant keeping God <clears throat> Jehovah covenant keeping God You are the covenant keeping God The sun won't smite me and the moon it will not hurt me the floods, it won't swipe me, cause you are my anchor. The sun won't smite me, no, the moon, it will not hurt me. The floods won't sweep me, cause you are my anchor. Jesus, the covenant keeping God. Yeshua, the covenant keeping God. Jehovah, covenant keeping God. Yahweh, covenant keeping God. In the holy book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 6, the Lord says, He will go before us. He will never leave us. He will not forsake us. He will not fail us. And he says, To fear thou not, and to be not dismayed. Hallelujah. And that is a beautiful promise because in this life, things get heavy sometimes, and you tend to kind of forget those true promises. But... When God speaks a word, it doesn't return back void to him. And that is our confidence. In these days, there is so much craziness going on. And people are so blinded that they don't even see that it's crazy or they'll think it's funny and they will go along with it. But the truth is, people are hurting. And they are hurting in a way that they don't show it. Many people hurt in silence. But I'm going to tell you, God is the God of meeting you while you're silent. He's the God that will meet you in the dark. He is the God that sees you and hears you and understands you even when you don't hear, see, or understand yourself. And the reason we worship him is because of who he is, not even just because of what he does. Who and what he is, is the savior of the whole world. And when we are falling short and we don't know how to lift our head, we have the God who sees, hears, and delivers. Nobody can separate us from the love of God, not even our own selves, because many times we are our worst enemy. We seek the Lord because he knows 
he said in his holy word don't you know he says that he knew you before he even formed this world so anything in the world has no power over the one that knew your name he said he's already written your story before your mama knew you before you were formed he knew you that's a covenant keeping God because many things could have come along and taken us from this earth before our time but there is work to do and it's not a physical work it's a spiritual work it's a heart space work you hear the woodpecker I don't know if you can hear it on this microphone he just a knocking away God is good Jesus is real don't you dare let nobody tell you that he ain't. And I'm also tell you this. He cares. And the Bible says he counts your tears. So many people, they try to get the perfect prayer and say everything. To try to get everything in a perfect order and aligned with what you feel you got to tell them. And can't rest because you got to say every single thing. Is to not trust him. Because the Bible says even when you don't formulate a word and you look up, even when you are just, <sighs> the Bible says he knows what your groan means. Your groan is when it's an inside silent job, when you are sighing and painfully hurting on the inside, when you can't get the words to say, help me, Jesus. He says he already feels and knows it. Your tears have prayers in it. Every single one of them. But not just this year, not just in 2020. But when you were a baby, he counted all your tears. He knows the number of hair on your head. And he understands what you're going through. That's why we say. We will seek you first, Lord. You will hear our voices. Early in the morning. Late in the night, we will sing your praises, giving you the glory, offering our lives to you, a holy sacrifice. So let our praise arise. As it sits, oh Lord, to you, let our worship be a fragrance, oh Lord, to you. We will seek you first, Lord. Seek him first. You will hear our voices. Make that promise. Early in the morning and late in the night. We will sing your praises. Giving you the glory. Offering our lives to you, a holy sacrifice. Sing with me. Let our praise arise as incense, O Lord, to you. Let our worship be a fragrance, O oh Lord, to you. I just want to be a sacred space. I just want to be a holy Temple. I just want to be a tabernacle for you. Mm, where you are, where you are, 
where you are, where you are, thank you Lord. The reason we say that we want our praise to be, a, 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 let our worship be a fragrance to you is because the Bible says that when we send up our worship and our praise to the Lord, that it is a sweet fragrance to him. The angel opens it up when it gets there. And then it goes up like a fragrant smell in heaven, in the throne room. The throne room in the book of Isaiah and in Elisha and in Daniel, it says how beautiful, beautiful it is. If we can bring in and put in a sweet fragrance in that beautiful, beautiful throne room of the Holy Father who can answer your prayer, wouldn't you want to do it? We seek him first because to go to your sister, brother, mother, brother, even your pastor, or even your husband or wife first can't do nothing for you. When you go to the Lord first... Then he'll lead you to go to your husband and your wife or your minister or the prophet or even just the lady on the corner that's saying Jesus saves every day. He'll tell you where to go. Sometimes he'll say be still and don't go nowhere. I got the answer for you, my child. That's what he says sometimes. And what we got to do is learn how to be still. In the holy book of Psalm chapter 46 verse 10, it says be still. And know that I am God. We will seek you first, Lord. You will hear our voices. Early in the morning and late in the night. You will hear our voices. We will sing your praises, giving you the glory, offering our lives to you, a holy sacrifice. So let our praise arise as it sits. Oh Lord, to you let our worship be a fragrance. Oh Lord, to you I just want to be a sacred space we want to be a place he feels comfortable just not visiting but just dwelling in we just want to be a holy temple your body is a temple what you put in it and what you let out of it is very important even the bible says that when you join yourself with a harlot that you become one flesh with her. Meaning when you having sex outside of marriage, you are joining with that person in a way that is more than just physical. What they are dealing with spiritually, now you will be dealing with it and vice versa. A lot of people are dealing with schizophrenia, bipolarism, and all these other kind of spirits. Not because of anything they've you know, personally done, but because they've joined themselves with somebody that has it to be a holy temple is to ask the Lord to cleanse you nobody's perfect but he will help you I just want to be a tabernacle for you yes where you are mm -hmm. where you are I just want to be where you are, yes, Jesus, where you are, hallelujah. And in closing, the holy book of 
Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says If you confess the Lord, call him up. 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 If you believe in the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost, call him up and tell him what you are. Just stop calling his name, I just can't stop. Calling his name, I just can't stop. Calling his name, Jesus. Yes, I can't stop calling his name, I just can't stop calling his name, I just can't stop calling his name, Jesus. Yes, I hope this has helped you to know that you are not alone. You're not alone physically, even though you may not see it. Many people are experiencing exactly what you are experiencing. That bee is not going to bother me. I used to catch bees when I was a baby. Or not a baby, but nearly a baby. I used to take the jar and pick it up. Uh, put it on top of the bee. Let it fly up in the jar. Turn it over. Poke holes in the pickle jar. And then I would put some daisies and flowers in there. Let him play around with it. And then I let him out in the evening. <laughs> I ain't afraid of no bee. And neither should you be afraid of anything else that can come along and buzz along in front of you. In your ear. Telling you you can't do it. Yes, you can. Seek God first. Let him hear your voice early in the morning and even later in the night. He hears you and he will answer you. I pray that this has helped you. I love you. But most importantly, the Lord loves you the most. And in closing. May the Lord bless us and keep us and make his face to shine upon us and to be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Shalom, shalom, shalom. I'm touching the camera. I want you to know I'm touching and agreeing with you. And the Bible says when two or three are together, he is there. He says one can put many to flight, but two can put so much more to flight. Let's get them on out of here. Those, whatever it is we don't need, push it out. But most importantly, know that you don't do it. Let the Lord do it. He'll show you what to do to do it. Have a beautiful day. I love you. Sister Hurston, I love you. God bless everyone that watches this video. And let your light shine.